Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Handmade by Ying with Donna. Today is a talk with you, uh, like a video vlog per se, of breast cancer awareness and why it's so important to me and why this one particular um, reach out is hitting close to home for me. Some people know what's my back history with it and some don't. So with that being said, I've been asked to give my story. So here's Donna's story of why breast cancer awareness is so important to me and my family. So with that being said, here it is. Um, back in 2006 and a little bit before that, at times I would have lumps and bumps within the breast area. I would go to the doctor and they would biopsy or take said lumps out. Um, my mother had been diagnosed with a breast cancer in her left breast and many of her sisters were. So I have a strong family history of breast cancer. In 2001, my mother lost her left breast. We, my husband and I took her to um, Ruby Memorial. And um, from there, she went to Mongahalia and had her left breast removed and come home and recovered with us. And um, she had an amazing outcome and no residual um, effects from her breast cancer. Um, moving forward, I've had many, many cousins and other family members. I, my mother had seven sisters. All seven had breast cancer. That's pretty strong family genes. So as I was getting a little bit older and the lumps were coming more frequent, um, I tested positive for the positive gene marker for breast cancer. It was just a matter of when this was going to happen, not if. So my husband and I had many, many talks, and they were hard talks. And my children were still young. My son had just um, two years prior graduated high school, and my daughter was in her getting, she was a junior getting ready to start her senior year. So, um we made the tough decision to go ahead and move forward with bilateral um, breast removal and um, reconstruction. That was done in 2006, and that was the beginning of a hard road for me and a journey that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Um, I went through the surgery, um, and all that was fine. I um, During my stay at the hospital, um, they did the bilateral breast removal and started the reconstruction immediately while I was in the hospital. It was all this one surgery. Everything was going to be great. And then I would just go through with having um, the fillers, per se, to stretch the muscle so they'd be able to put the implants in down the road. So there was going to be multiple surgeries. And I knew this going in. Um, during the stay there, I ended up with a pick line put in, another surgery, and they had to go in and call my general surgeon back in. They had to call in a specialist. Um, it was a blood specialist and an, then an infection specialist. I was in the hospital for two or three weeks, surgeries, cleaning out all this infection and all the nastiness that had happened. So um, I wake up and I'm told that they're putting me into a, a um, rehabilitation. And it was part of the hospital, but my mind wasn't right. I was so sick. So um, I called my husband and I was a fuss and you're putting me in a nursing home. You're dumping me, blah, blah, blah. And that was just the wife in me. And I, I was so sick I didn't understand. Here he's fighting to keep me alive. And I was just like, not receptive. So our hospital had an extended care unit and I spent six weeks there. My daughter went to school behind this hospital. So she would come down every day after school, lay on the bed, do homework with me. My husband was there around. I want to say if he wasn't there, he was doing school running with the kids. My son would visit and things. And my the infection specialist told him that they didn't know if I was going to pull through this. This infection was pretty nasty. 
said my husband talked to the kids and they had to make the tough decision. The medicine that they were going to give me, it was either going to kill me or cure me. But they told him that it was uh, the infection was so bad, I was going to get worse before I got better. But I had to have the fight in me. So my husband and my kids talked to me and I still, my mind wasn't right. I was just sick. And um, so they did the treatment and every day my husband, my kids would come in and I was, the whites of my eyes was like blood red and I was just sick. And two or three weeks into all this medicine being pumped in and stuff, I started to turn the corner and they started to see me getting better. So after a six week stint, maybe seven ish in the hospital, I had a long recovery yet at home. But um, I'm so thankful and blessed that they made the decision on my behalf. The, they were fighting for mom. They were fighting for the wife. And um, I, I'm a strong believer. We're stronger together. And without the strong family support, my church, my friends, I just I was just like, you know, when you're down and out and you, you wallow in self-pity a bit, the woe is me and the why is me. So why did I have the family gene marker? Why was I so sick? Why did I make the choice to go ahead and move forward? Well, I did to save my life. And that's what my husband and kids said. So I got stronger and a couple years had went by and I re-entertained the thought of instead of the prosthetics, I wanted to do the reconstruction, but with a different surgeon. So. We toyed with the idea, better part of about a year, thinking was, what's the risk? So we finally made the appointment, went for it, and I did the reconstruction. No real issues at all with that, and um, got through that. And um, in 2011, I had issues here in my throat, and we didn't know what was wrong. So my local doctor sent me to Baltimore, and numerous times of injections and biopsies we found out i had thyroid cancer so what this is all about is just a video blog to tell you my story and ask you guys it doesn't matter the age cancer does not hold prisoners you could be 18 you could be 16 if you're a girl go get the girls checked to get a baseline um, talk to your doctor if you've got a strong family history of breast cancer. The life you save isn't just that of your friends, it's that of yourself. And you have to do self-care, self-breast exams. It's so important. Years ago, they used to have a placard that would hang in your shower on the hook. As a little reminder, every month when you're in there, give yourself a check. Fast forward years later, guys are now getting breast cancer too. And it's undiagnosed. So it's important for not only the ladies, but the gents. When you're in the shower, feel that chest wall. Feel that chest muscle. Feel up under your arms. Feel under your breast area. Feel everything. Get familiar with your body. You know your body better than any doctor. And if it feels funny, call Call your doctor and say, look, I found something. It just doesn't feel right. That's going to be your best early detection is you. So with that being said, I want to thank everybody for listening to this video and watching it. But I'm also asking, October's rolling up on us. And everybody knows every kind of cancer is important. We've got so many different kinds out there, but breast cancer hits me. And as a content creator, there's it's our way of pushing out just a little bit more to say, check yourself. Check, have your kids when they're teenagers and they're heading into college. Get that baseline. Teach them. They've got to do self-care. I've seen girls as a early as 19 and 20 develop breast cancer. I've lost a friend this year. She fought a seven-year battle with breast cancer. 
and she was more like a sister to me. So she fought hard. She wasn't ready to go. And she knew her time was coming, and she prepared her family on how to let her go. And uh, Renee is someone that will always be near and dear to my heart. I'll always carry her in my heart. I have a cousin who's in a battle right now fighting breast cancer. That's how strong my family genes are. I'm not sure about yours. But cancer is real. Every form of cancer. So I'm asking any and all content creators out there for the month of October, let's push this out. Let's save our moms, our sisters, our cousins, our brothers. Talk to them. Have open dialogue. Ask them when their last mammogram was. If they can't remember, have them schedule the next one. Let's do birthdays. Let's do anniversary. Set it up on a date that's important to you. So you remember when your last one was. So many of us rely on the calendars on our phone, the calendar that we write something down in. But at the end of the year, we've moved on to the next year and that gets filed or lost. You got to call your doctor and ask, did I have a mammogram? If not, get it scheduled. If you did, when's the next one due? You have to be your next advocate. You have to fight if you want to survive. And cancer hits all ages. Years ago, it used to be at the age of 40 to get that first baseline. But I know as a fact that at 20 and up now, 30 and up, if your gene marker is strong, you need that baseline and your doctors and your insurances will pay for it. So please, I implore upon you, let's push this out there as content creators, as moms, as daughters, as cousins, as friends. Get the word out. Susan G. Coleman is an amazing foundation. But right now, the Fabric Patch is also doing a fundraiser. And it's a charity auction. And that's what they've labeled it as. And they've got people mailing quilts in, bras in. They've asked their viewers, subscribers, to submit someone in the way that theirs is going to run. And you can slip over. Their information is going to be in the description box below. That um, in October, I believe it's the 2nd, they're going to do a live auction of all these items that's been sent to them. The money raised by these items will be sent to the recipient versus the seat. Susan G. Coleman Foundation, because as a survivor myself and Cindy, we understand the, the residual financial that hits, whether you need to buy a wick, whether it's you need medicine that's not covered by your insurance, the little bit that's raised by this charity auction is going to help several individuals. But for myself, I'm sending along a bra for auction. I'm sending along a pillow that they can do what they want with. But as a survivor, I know I still sleep with what's called a cuddle pillow. I, lay, I have to lay my arm up on a pillow at night so it relieves the pressure in the chest. It happens. And I'm sending along one that they can just bless someone with. I've got this quilt behind me that's going to be going. It's a beautiful wall hanging. I've had my husband video that into one um, video that's going to be purged out. Um, that's going to be going out to Cindy Rang and her daughter Brianna to auction off. So if you're a content creator, I'm asking you, challenging you for the month of October Help me help so many. We have a voice. Our channel reaches many thousands of people. I know people that have hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Let's reach out. Tell your story if you're a survivor. 
If you're not and you know someone, your mom, your sister, your brother, ask if you can tell their story because it's going to help someone else. So Joe went out while I was away this week and he got me some shirts. So what I'm going to do for the month of October is my other shirts. I always wear pink in October, but I'll wear a lot of pink. And everything has a little logo that has something on it. And this one in particular says hope, remember, faith, strength, cure, care to fight, believe in yourself. And it has all those words in the ribbon. My shirt today says we're stronger together, and I strongly believe in that. I know for me, without my family support, my husband as my biggest cheerleader, and my kids, I was looking forward to getting better. And without them, I don't know. So have that dialogue. Open up. Moms, tell your kids to get checked. So with all that being said, check out Cindy and Brianna over at the Fabric Patch. They're doing amazing things to raise awareness. They're raising funds. For my side of the house, we've asked people to submit, and um, we didn't get any submissions. So I reach out to my cousin who's in a big fight right now. She's in year two of her battle with breast cancer. She's finished her chemotherapy. Now she's moved on to radiation. And every week, it's a doctor appointment. It's mileage to get back and forth to that big hospital that she needs that's helping her to stay alive. So my items is going with a letter, and I've asked her to compose her dialogue of her journey. That way, when Cindy does her auction, they can read, and any money raised on behalf of Handmade by Ying, that's the way we're submitting mine, is going to be the quilt, the bra, and the pillow. Well, Cindy and her daughter, Brianna, at the end of that auction, whatever's raised on my behalf of the items that I'm sending, that will segue to North Carolina via them as a blessing. This auction is a blessing to each and every recipient that they're doing. So if you have any questions, reach out, pick up the phone, and call Cindy. Ask her how you can pitch in and help. Ask her if you can send a bra that's decorated to be used as a fundraiser. Be a voice. Be a change. As I said, we're stronger together. You guys have a great day, and I'll see you back again all through the month of October. I'm going to do morning clips, and they'll feed out little inspirational messages for the entire month of October. And I asked y'all to tune in. They're going to be like little five-minute things. Just encouraging messages and asking you, did you talk to so-and-so today? Give them that little reminder. Give them that nudge. It's a painful test, uncomfortable, but it's well worth it. And the life you save could be yours or your mom's. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you back in the next video. Thanks again for all your love and support of our channel. And if you're not subscribed, please do. Hit the like button if you like the content that we share. It means everything to Joe and I. Together we grow, together we sow, and teamwork. We're all in this fight together. Take care and bye-bye. <music>